Hello and God bless you. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Break the Chains with yours truly, Evangelist Ann Anderson. Truly, I am thankful for you joining me today and I know that God has a blessing for you. I just want to share some things with you today um, that has been on my heart. And so as you come in, um, as you're sharing, um, as you are gathering around um, your computers, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see another day, oh God. Lord, a day that we've never seen before, God. Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, God, I pray that you begin to break up the fallow ground, oh God. I, be, I, I pray, oh God, Lord, that, that this seed falls on good ground today, Lord. God, I thank you for everyone that is watching. God, I pray that healing of the heart goes forth. Oh God, I, I pray that someone is fortified and motivated, my God, to go on a little while longer. Lord, I just thank you today, giving you the glory and honor in Jesus name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Well, praise the Lord again. Amen. And as I said, I wanted to share some things um, that were on my heart. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit today about standing in the gap. Amen. Standing in the gap. And when we talk about standing in the gap, we're kind of referring, mostly referring to intercession. Amen. I'm um, talking about praying for others, uh, making sure that, that they are covered. Uh, and so I, I wanted to kind of um, talk to you um, about a scripture here um, that I, I uh, love so well. Uh, many people are not even familiar uh, with this particular sister in the Bible, but I want to bring her out today because I understand that in the times that we're living in right now, there are, are lots of mothers, there are a lot of sisters, there are a lot of aunties, and, and just a, a lot of women um, who are praying uh, for their families and praying for their loved ones and praying for their sons and for their daughters. And I want to give you a word of encouragement today to stay on the wall. Keep pressing. Keep praying. My God, keep the assignment. Hallelujah. That God has given you regarding your family. And you know, one thing about a mother I could say about my own mother when I was in my mess. Hallelujah. My mother still had my back. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And my mother prayed me in a many nights. I always say this. She prayed me in a many nights to home base. Prayed me in from the crack house. Prayed me in. Hallelujah. From the club. And I praise God today for intercessory prayer. So I want to uh, uh, talk to you just a little bit um, about the scripture. We're going to go to 2 Samuel uh, chapter 21. Amen. And uh, we're going to uh, just kind of delve in and I may jump around a little bit, but just stay with me because you're going to be blessed. So chapter 21 of 2 Samuel verse 1 reads, Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house. Because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites. This is talking about David. And said unto them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel. But of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them. And Saul sought to slay them in his zeal. To impress the children of Israel. In so many words. In Judah. Wherefore David said to the Gibeonites. He said. What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul. In other words, we don't want Saul's money, nor of his house. We don't want anything in his house. Neither for us shall thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What shall you say? What is it that you want me to do for you? And they answered the king. The man that consumed us, uh-huh, uh-huh, and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them to you. 
But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Rispa. Mm -hmm, remember that name. Rispa, the daughter of Ai, whom she bare unto Saul. Armoni and Mephibosheth and the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Braziel and Maholthite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell, all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days in the beginning of barley harvest. And Rispa, keep listening, keep listening. And Rispa, the daughter of Ai, took sackcloth, y'all, and spread it up on her for, spread it up on a rock. She took a cloth and she spread out on a rock from the beginning of harvest until water dropped up on them out of heaven. And she suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. And it was told David what Rispah, the daughter of Ai, the concubine of Saul, had done. And I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. We're talking about a woman by the name of Rispah. Rispah was a woman who was a concubine of King Saul. She had two sons by him. But she also had grandsons as well. So we see Rispa put in a horrible situation. Because to give you a little history of what's really going on here, we have King David uh, inquiring of the Lord why this famine is continuing in Israel. Three years, Lord, year after year, we've been having a famine. So the Lord answers David and said, it's because of what Saul has done to the Gibeonites. So Saul in all of his glory, my God, decided that he wanted to impress Israel. And so he tried to annihilate the Gibeonites. Now let me tell you about the Gibeonites. So the Gibeonites were people who had come in to Israel. They had tricked Israel by saying, you know, we've been on a long journey. Uh, we, they put on old tattered clothes. They brought old bread. Uh, and they were actually people that lived in the area. But because David had become king, my God, they wanted to make sure that they could dwell there in peace. And so they basically tricked them. Hallelujah. And so because of the oath and the covenant that Israel had made with the Gibeonites, with Joshua, they were actually allowed to stay there in Israel. But when Saul came in, Saul decided that he wanted to annihilate them and make an example of them. And so God was not pleased because there was a breaking of an oath. Okay, so we fast forward now. David has found out that the reason that they're in a famine is because of what happened when Saul reigned. So now here we are. We see David talking to the Gibeonites and saying, what is it that I can do to appease you? How can I uh, 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 um, make up for what was done to you? Uh huh. And they told him, we don't want your money. We don't want anything. What we want is the man, Saul, who caused this thing to come upon us. We want seven of his sons to be hung. My God, hallelujah. And so David being the king said, okay, I'll do that. I'll give them to you. So David being the king and keeping covenant and, and being, uh, you know, who he was to the Gibeonites, that was all well and good. Okay. But those sons had a mother <laughs> and the mother was, was named Rispa. Can you imagine Rispa going ar about her daily uh, duties uh, and having a knock on the door? Uh huh, uh huh. And, and, and maybe even opening the door and knowing these guards that were coming to get her sons. Ah, how are you doing, Rispa? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Why are you here, sir? Well, we've come to take your sons. What do you mean you're coming to take my sons? Mind you, she could do nothing. She was powerless. 
my God, to keep her sons from hanging. So they took Rispa's sons, and I'm sure she looked out and saw uh, the other grandsons that they had. My God. And, 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 and she, all she could do now at this point was to follow them to the place where they were going to hang them. Uh, and the Bible goes on to say that Rispa's sons and her grandsons were hung on the tree by the Gibeonites. My God from glory. Ah, uh, they stretched them out and they, they hung them up and, and they allowed them uh, uh, to, to, to be hung uh, probably in front of their mother. Amen. And in front of their grandmother. Ah, uh, but the Bible says there was something about Rispa. Ah, uh, Rispa said, I may not be able to keep them from dying. Ah, uh, but I am going to stop the, the, the beast of the, the field at night and the birds of the air by day uh, from attacking their bodies. My God. And when I began to read that, I began to think about so many mothers and so uh, many aunts and aunties and so many women, my God, that have lost in these past years, in these past months, my God, and they've had to fight, hallelujah, for justice for their children. They've had to fight, hallelujah, for justice for their sons and justice for their daughters, just like Rispa. Hallelujah. Mm, and the Bible says that she, she put a, a sackcloth over a rock. My God, and I began to look at that rock, hallelujah, knowing that, that, that the Bible calls Jesus our rock, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, and so she, she began to, to, to stay on the rock, she laid on that rock, on that sackcloth, hallelujah, which is symbolic of fasting, Ha! Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus, mm, sackcloth and ashes, hallelujah, Rispa, she began to now uh, stay there, the Bible says she was there from harvest, until the rain came my God from glory we hear the Bible saying that the harvest is ripe ah but the laborers are few let me say this to you mothers to you women to those of you that are fighting for your families this is a time of harvest hallelujah but God's kingdom is not the only one that's looking for a harvest ah the enemy is trying to harvest our young men and our young women as well ah, and you may not have a child that is physically dead hallelujah ah but the enemy has tried to kill them spiritually uh-huh uh-huh and they may have walked away from god spiritually uh-huh uh-huh and, and so now it's our time to stand in the gap like rispa hallelujah many a times our children hallelujah our loved ones they are, are just kind of walking around uh, uh, like zombies they don't even really know which way to go hallelujah Hallelujah. And in this pandemic, I've, I've seen young people, hallelujah, who need direction. They need purpose. Hallelujah. But it's going to take the intercessor. It's going to take you, woman of God, you mother, continue standing in the gap for your children. Uh, Rispa, she took the heat. Uh, my God, I'm sure she had no idea what it was going to take. Uh, hallelujah. When you study the story, uh, you find out that Rispa, uh, she wasn't there for just a few days. Uh, she didn't come on a Sunday. Uh, my God, and leave on a Friday night. Uh, oh, but Rispa was there. Hallelujah. For 10 months. Uh, 10 months fighting away the birds. Uh, ten months fighting away the lions and the coyotes at night. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, that's good news for somebody today. Uh, there's somebody that you've been praying for. Uh, my God. Uh, and you had no idea uh, that it was going to take this long. Uh, hallelujah. Before you saw results. Uh, but I want to tell you today, uh, don't stop pressing. Uh, don't stop praying. Uh, don't stop interceding. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. The thing may look dead. The situation may look dead. Let me tell you. Hallelujah. Many a times we're talking to people that we're praying for. And it's like it goes in one ear and comes out the other one. My God. But I have good news for you today. All you need to do is stay on your post. Hallelujah. God is getting ready uh, to turn that 
situation around. If you continue uh, to stand in the gap, uh, hallelujah, uh, and it's not just for our children, uh, not just for our loved ones. Uh, my God, we need intercessors uh, standing in the gap, uh, hallelujah, for our government, uh, standing in the gap for America, uh, standing in the gap for our preachers, uh, hallelujah, standing in the gap uh, for the world. Uh, I know it looks like it's a dead situation, uh, and I know it looks like you just want to give up uh, my God but I'm here to tell you today uh, take a lesson uh, from this sister uh, Rispa uh, hallelujah in 2nd Samuel 21 uh, this sister said uh, hallelujah there's something in me uh, my God uh, that has I have a fight in me uh, listen I say hear him say uh, it's not about uh, hallelujah my God the fight that the dog is in uh, my God but it's the fight that's in the dog. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, my God, so you got to get the fight back. Uh, hallelujah. You got to, my God, get your determination back uh, and stand in the gap uh, and continue to pray. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, you will see the fruit of your labor. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, the name Rispa, it means a hot stone. Uh, it means that she was passionate. Hallelujah. About what she was doing. Uh, my God, find a soul, find an assignment, and get passionate about it, and begin to pray. You might not be able to leave your house and go out and do the things that you want to do. You may not be able to get the face-to-face. -face. Hallelujah, in this pandemic. Hallelujah, but this is a perfect time. Hallelujah, for you to get on the rock. Get yourself situated in Jesus. Hallelujah, and begin to lift up a prayer. Uh, begin to lift up, uh, hallelujah, some timber. Uh, hallelujah uh, for that soul. Uh, my God, that's hanging in the balance. Uh, don't you know that heaven uh, is waiting uh, to hear from you? Uh, heaven is waiting uh, to hear from you uh, so he can turn it around. Uh, God wants to hear uh, hallelujah, somebody uh, crying out in the earth. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's hard. And I know it gets tiring. My God from glory. Rispa didn't get up to take a bath. She didn't leave her post. My God, she didn't change her clothes. Hallelujah. She just kept praying. And she kept fighting off the birds of the air. Let me tell you something. Mothers, I know that there are many of you that are praying. Hallelujah. For justice for your children. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, my God, you're fighting off the birds of the air. Uh, fighting off what people are saying about your children. Uh, fighting off of, uh, the, the gainsayers and, and, and what people uh, are saying to each other about your child. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, stay on your post. Uh, stay on your post. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, keep praying. Uh, keep pushing. Uh, because God is going to vindicate you. Uh, hallelujah. God is going to bring about a change. My God, when you look at the end of the story, huh, let me tell you how it ended. Huh? So Rispa, huh? she was there for 10 months huh? fighting for her children. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? And the Bible says huh, that when it was told to King David huh, what Rispa had done huh, from the time of harvest huh, to the time the rain came. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? Listen, huh? you need to keep pressing huh, until the Holy Ghost comes. Uh, you need to keep pressing uh, until the fresh rain of God uh, rains down on your children uh, and saturates them. Uh, hallelujah. And puts them in a place, uh, my God, where the bird don't even want them no more. Uh, where the beast don't even want them no more. Uh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Uh, keep pushing. It says David uh, went and took the bones. Uh, hallelujah. Of Saul and the bones of Jonathan. Mm-hmm. And he took the bones of her son, hallelujah, took them down, and he gave them justice. He gave them a proper burial, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. So Rispa got what she wanted through standing in the gap for her children, even though they were dead, even though when she looked 
at her child. She could never see the smile on his face again. She still stood her ground. If she did that for a dead child, how much more shouldn't we do, my God from glory, for those that are still alive? Hallelujah. My God, keep praying for those my God, that God has put on your heart. Keep praying for your children. And I even began to think about those that have been slain. I began to think about the F Freddie Graves. And I began to, to, to think about the George Lords. And I began to, to, to think uh, about all those that, that um, uh, Trayvon Martin, those that, that have uh, 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 lost their lives. Hallelujah. And how even their mothers are still fighting for them fighting for justice for them. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Uh, my God, we need to continue, hallelujah, to even pray, hallelujah, for those families. My God from glory. Uh, let's take a lesson from Rispa, my God, and continue to stand in the gap. Prayer is powerful. Hallelujah. I'm a living witness. What the police couldn't do. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God. What a rehab couldn't do. Hmm. Hallelujah. Prayer changes things. And prayer works. It worked for me. Hallelujah. I tell people all the time. I took 12 steps, okay, <laughs> 12 steps from my seat to the altar, and I was delivered, my God, from a life of drug addiction, hallelujah, and lewd living and a lewd lifestyle, hallelujah, Paul, but when I look in the background, I see my mother on her knees praying for me. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Prayer is powerful. Wherever you're listening from today, Whatever it is that you need God to do, whoever it is that you need God to do it for, hallelujah, I challenge you today, stand in the gap, huh? keep pressing in, keep pushing in, oh, shande orabashata, hallelujah, my God, God is waiting to hear. My God, your cries. It's time for us, uh, women, men, to get back to weeping between the porch and the altar. Hallelujah. My God, if we're going to change, uh, if anything is going to change, mm, it's going to come through prayer, through pushing, through standing in the gap. Hallelujah. So I thank God today. Hallelujah for the story of Rispa. Ah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, you have to understand that your prayers mean something. The enemy does not want you to pray. The enemy does not want you to call out that name over and over and over again. My God, don't give up on them. Oh God, don't give up on them. Uh, keep pressing. Keep pushing. Hallelujah. And, and many of us can say the same thing. I'm sure many of you have a testimony too, uh, that somebody prayed for you. Somebody stood in the gap for you. In this pandemic, it's going to take prayer ah, to keep us. Prayer, pray, pray for that soul that's being uh, 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 domestically abused. Pray for that soul that's contemplating suicide. Hallelujah. Pray. Hallelujah. My God, that God brings change. Hallelujah, even in this pandemic. So we thank God today for you being with us. My God, there is nothing like a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost when you are in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I just encourage you today. I want to uh, go before the Lord with you um, in prayer. Remember to continue to stand in the gap. We see the story of Rispa and how it was out of her control. There are many things that we are going through. It is out of our control. The pandemic is out of our control. Hallelujah. But God is in control of everything. Hallelujah. And we see Rispa, even though she had to give up her sons, my God, mm, and allow them to be taken and hung on a tree. That did not stop her from, from defending them. Hallelujah. Even in that state. So God, we thank you right now, Lord, for uh, all that has been said. My God, we thank you 
because we know that you are a God uh, that hears us when we pray. God, we thank you. Uh, for being our intercessor. Uh, we thank you, O oh God, that you are yet praying for us, Lord Jesus. And my God, I pray that you stir us up, O oh God, and take us to a place, my God, of intercession. Uh, give us the compassion, O oh God, that we need, my God, when it comes uh, to other people. My God, Lord, we thank you for every family, O oh God, that is represented uh through our viewers today. My God, I pray that, that there's a move in their families. There's a move in their homes. There's a move on their children. That wayward son, that wayward daughter. My God, hallelujah. The situation that, that may look dead. It looks like the enemy has hung it up for display for everybody to look at. Hey, God. Hey, God. But we send the fire of the Holy Ghost. Ah, my God, to revive, to restore, to refresh. My God, and refresh even the intercessor, oh God. My God, that may be weary, that, that, that may be tired, oh God. Hallelujah. My God, Lord, raise up new intercessors, those that are, are willing to press in and to pray, oh God. Lord, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Ah, God, that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. Lord, we just trust you. We trust you for breakthrough, oh God. We trust you, oh God, for deliverance. My God, we trust you, hallelujah, for the turnaround. My God, in every situation uh, that they may be going through over these airways. Now, God, we seal this prayer and we honor you, oh God, and we are expecting, oh God, you to do what you do best. Heal, deliver, set free, oh God, and bring us to that expected end. There is an end man man or woman there is an end to what you're going through hallelujah and god has it just for you all you need to do is just get in his face and stand in the gap and i bless you in jesus name amen and thank god thank you so much for joining us today on break the chains we hope something was said that was a blessing to you go forth and stand in the gap god bless you The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.